If you often travel in the winter, this video is probably for you. Hey everybody, I'm Brad from 13 Adventures, and today I want to talk to you about the cold hard truth of propane on your Airstream. Join me. We all rely on these dual 30 pound propane tanks. Some of you with smaller traders have a little smaller version, but you can do some math and figure all this out too. But what I really want to show you is how in cold weather, 60 pounds of propane can disappear faster than your last s'more. The common misconception is that it's all about capacity. How many BTUs are in the tank, for example. But in reality, it's about how many BTUs the tank can release when the mercury drops. And for that, we need to talk about vaporization. I put together a chart here based on the performance data showing exactly how many BTUs one of your 30 pound tanks can deliver at various temperatures and various fill levels. So. Let's dive into the three biggest energy hogs first. If you're not aware, BTU stands for British Thermal Unit and is simply how much heat energy an appliance uses in an hour. Typically, number one thing is your furnace. The forced air furnace that I have from Dometic is an 18,000 BTUs per hour type of unit. In really cold weather, that might run 60 to 70% of the time, meaning it's pulling propane for 14 to 17 hours out of a 24 hour period. Number two, water heater. And this on demand water heater is it has a high spike draw, but it doesn't draw it all the time, keeping like a tanked water system warm. But this particular Gerard on-demand water heater is rated at 42,000 BTUs per hour. Now, it has a shut off at 20 minutes, uh, which is a good thing if you're trying to take a long shower in an RV like that. You're trying to bring house habits into your RV, and you can't really do those type things. But when you are pulling propane in that thing, particularly when cold water is going into it, it's, bu it's pulling twice the amount of the furnace is. Number three is the cooktop and oven if you have those, but uh, a typical three burner Furion cooktop can pull 21,000 BTUs and it's roughly 7,000 BTUs per burner head. And if you have an oven, that's another six to 8,000 BTUs depending on the temperature you have it set to. Again, those cooktop things and the oven things are typically for short duration type energy pool. But if I take all the systems in my trailer right now and I turn them all on at once, all on max power, I'm demanding about 81,000 BTUs coming out of my tanks. And that brings me to my most important part, the chart. If you're looking right now on the screen, my cold weather performance chart, I just want you to remember that a full 30 pound tank has about 500,000 BTUs of energy stored in it. And this chart right here shows you the maximum amount of energy the tank can release as vapor in one single hour. First, I want you to look at the 20 degree Fahrenheit and 60% full on your tank. So at that level, your tank can only provide 45,000-ish BTUs per hour. And that that is the key thing right there. That's your maximum flow rate. If you demand that, ma that many BTUs, that's the furnace, the water heater, and the stove, but your tank can only deliver 45,000 BTUs, one of these appliances is gonna sputter and flame out. Your furnace might shut off, your water heater would definitely won't light, things like that. So you just gotta think about that in terms of temperature and how full your tank is. Now, the real danger zone is zero degrees Fahrenheit. If you look at the tank when it's 30% full, it can only deliver 20,000 BTUs per hour. At that temperature and that level of your tank, you're barely keeping up with your 18,000 BTU furnace running alone. Forget taking a shower, forget trying to light that stove or anything else going on. What's gonna happen is your tank is immediately gonna freeze up and you're gonna get no propane out of, out of them whatsoever. If you notice how the BTU drops as the tank gets empty, that's because the liquid propane needs surface area to vaporize. The less liquid you have in the tank, the less surface area you have exposed to the ambient warmth and the less vapor you get. There are some options. You can put some uh, silicone-based heating pads on your tanks and get them to vaporize some more. You can heat them up by <laughs> putting warm things against them. It heats the tank up. But there's also jackets you can put on. Them. Those things are kind of expensive. But anything that can help to keep your tank warmer than the air, that will help with the vaporization process. All right, let's get back to the real-world runtime. Scenario one, if your furnace runs about 40% of the time, your two tanks might last you uh, 7 to 10 days. That's pretty sustainable. Scenario number two is if the temperature is at 20 degrees Fahrenheit and your furnace runs 65% of the time on a single 30 pound tank, that's gonna be empty in uh, like 72 hours. Scenario number three is if you get into zero degrees or less, you're gonna go through a 30 pound tank in two days or less because the tank's limited supply rate means your furnace struggles and it probably runs nonstop to keep up with the heat. The dual tanks you have are a safety net and I, 
I say that you always, you know, the middle the middle selector valve, you always keep that pointed towards your primary tank. You don't want to pull from both tanks at the same time, but know the tank level you have. I currently use Mopika tank sensors on the bottom of my tanks to tell me what the levels are. Really handy. Nice app. I've got a video on that. But when you see it getting low and depending on the chart and depending on the temperatures you're camping in, it may be time when it gets like 50%, start using the other tank and go get your other one filled. Hopefully you're staying in an RV park or somewhere like that that's close by where you can get those things filled. But if you're not, just be be mindful that temperature changes can really, really affect your ability to produce BTUs out of your tank. There's some mitigation things you can do with, you know, electric heat. If you're plugged into shore power somewhere, you can heat things with electricity. If you have a base camp or you have a classic, those have tank heaters, but everything in between with the forced air furnace, the furnace has to be on to keep the tanks fed and keep the tanks from freezing. So that's a factor. Also, if you have the on-demand water heater, that on-demand water heater has to come on ever so often at temperatures below 40 degrees to keep the water pipes in there from freezing. Solution B is don't camp in those type weather conditions <laughs> because there are some other factors in your rig that you may not know. If you still have the absorption style refrigerators, those, most of those, I can't say all of those, most of those are not meant to be operated in less than 25 degree weather. There's a lot of factors on some of the things you may have in your rig that you don't even know about that aren't supposed to operate in super cold temperatures. People have asked me about the skirting. I've, I've said this before. There's air skirts that you can blow up and put around your airstream and may hold some of the uh, heat in. I don't know. I've never personally used them. I would not personally buy those and there's a myriad of factors here. One, cost. They're very expensive to get those things. Two, this is our full-time house, and you've already seen the back of my truck. It's full of stuff already, and if I had to store these things for months and months at a time, I got nowhere to put them all, so that's another factor. Three, uh, I would rather just go fill up my propane tanks multiple times over and over again instead of buying the skirts because uh, whatever they cost, that's a lot of tanks of propane I can purchase uh, to keep my rig warm, and I can always pick up and move to. So the big takeaway here is this. You don't run out of fuel. You run out of pressure. You can still have liquid propane in the tank, but it cannot vaporize fast enough to meet the appliance demands that you might have at the time. So I would tell you, please don't get caught in the cold unexpectedly, or if you do, please keep your tanks full. Check those gauges daily, especially when the temperatures drop below freezing. I hope you found this video interesting or helpful, particularly if winter's coming and winter camping is upon us. So uh, take some time to learn and understand the propane systems you have and again if you have the 20 pound tanks there's some charts out there that go over how many btus those can provide as well but most of us have the 30 pound tanks and if you have the other end of the spectrum the 40 pound tanks you're even better but uh, i would encourage you all to do some research on your specific model and learn your specific tanks and how long they might last and varying degrees of weather it can be very helpful so uh, that's all for this video uh, thanks for joining everybody. I hope you found this video informative or at least interesting. Uh, many of you just say my best winter camping is to get out of town and I agree with that on some levels but uh, still fun to do it in some times and sometimes you get caught and you didn't mean to. Hope you all have a wonderful day. Love you all. Can't wait to see you on the road. Bye.